in character. Welcome back to the Her Life Podcast. I have the most special guest today, a returner to our show, Kay Kerkinovich. Oh, she nailed it. Did I do it good? You nailed it so well. I've been practicing. (laughs) (laughs) Dear friend. Oh my God. So for any new listeners, Kay was on back, like literally our second episode, an episode called Herbert She Lied, which we will recap for you shortly, all about online dating because there is nobody who is as professional an online dater as Kay. Like you just have it on lock in a way that I can't even understand. And I just have learned so much from you, especially now that we're quarantine dating online. Welcome back. It's a whole different danger. It, it's a whole new ball game now, okay? So it deserves its own episode. Truly. Oh my God, I'm so excited to have you here. Before we totally dive in, we are, we're drinking again this episode because it's frankly just more fun. Um, okay, what are you drinking today? Product placement, I'm drinking Bon & Viv hard seltzer. It's um, clementine hibiscus flavor. Oh, bougie, okay. I love um, this. It's only 90 calories. And I think it's better than Truly White Claw, but to each their own. Live your truth. I'm happy for you. I'm also doing a new brand of a sparkling seltzer. Today I'm going Smirnoff, so we're going a little old school. This is a spiked sparkling seltzer, white peach rosé. And I'm, I'm into it. I like the packaging. I was saying it matches my fresh Manny because oh. we're in the green phase in Pennsylvania, so places are open. Things are moving and shaking. What's it like? Happy to be here. <laughs> What's it like? How are things in New York? You're in New York in a I'm new in- gorgeous apartment. Thank you. Yes. I just moved um, amidst the chaos. So it's been a whole process just getting settled in, mm-hmm. having a big girl apartment, um, figuring things out. It's been good though. I mean, it, it's been like pretty calm, I feel like for the most part. There's just fireworks all the time. <sighs> That's like my one complaint. Yeah. But it's been pretty good. And part. living with boys, no? Excuse me, men? No boys. <laughs> Make no mistake, <laughs> there, boys. Podcast about what it's like to live with two strange men. I bet. Um, but if I had to sum up my experience with living with men, it would just be the phrase "Why are men allowed?" <sighs> yeah, you that know? could be a segment. Wait, that would be such a good segment. Why are men allowed? Just period. Allowed. Question mark. So yeah, we'll do a different podcast. Just I love it. That. But, Stay tuned for that episode, but you are doing them. You look so just like, this is your vibe. Like, I'm so glad I get to see this. The exposed brick, your twinkly light. Like, you are just, same hotel in the back. Like, you're just the coolest freaking chick. I love you. I'm just feeling it. You know, I've, like, not to be too deep already, but I've just never felt, like, so at peace and happy in my life right now. I mean, even yeah. despite the current situation of the world, so. So that says a lot. Do you know what I mean? To feel yeah. so grounded and, like, whole while the world is literally spinning out of control in like so many ways. We'll get into it. The episode is young, but I'm just, I'm so glad to be here. Happy apartment warming. And I'm just excited to kick off the episode. So as I mentioned before, we, we did an episode a few months back about online dating. And I just wanted to do a little recap of some of the characters, because I don't think you can just say they're guys. These are characters in our dating lives um, that I wanted to be kind of like a where are they now episode. Like, have you heard from these guys? Would you ever reach back out? Like, just where are we at? So first up, your first ever Tinder date, I think it was, was someone we called Texas Tim. Texas Tim. Great date. Smooth as hell. So sweet. He's still in Texas? I honestly have no idea. I have not had any contact with him. Um, yeah, I don't even think I still have his number, honestly. I mean, it was a long time ago already. You know what I mean? We're talking years ago now. Right. It was almost like three years ago at this point. Um, Same. But I think I, like, saw him back on the dating app at one point. Oh. Between, like, okay. three years ago and now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I didn't really see them. Really That's okay, but I'm just such a fan. It was such a good date, such a good experience. We yeah. talked last time about the importance of, like, I don't, not choosing the right guy to go on the first date with, but, like, how formative a good experience for a first yeah. online date can be, because if it's a bad experience, like, you are not swiping right. anymore. Like, you're going to cool it. So, we both had good first experiences. I talked about someone we called Bumble Bart. <laughs> <laughs> who was just great for time. Um, I recently, I don't even know if I told you this guy, I might have like done a quick snap blog. He slid back into my DMs. I haven't talked to him in a few months now. We kind of just went our separate ways. I hadn't heard from him certainly since quarantine, since last year, really. Mm-hmm. 
and he messaged me. It was like kind of cute. It made my heart flutter because last summer we went to watch the Stanley Cup game. Like that was one of our summer dates and it was like a year ago. So he sent me like the ESPN bro one year ago, so-and-so won the Stanley Cup. And he like sent it to me and he was like, oh my God, can you believe it was a year? So it was just like cute. And that was the night that he stayed in my apartment and I lysoled him. And he like right, didn't even think. Down. Yes. And I was like, I literally said this to him. I was like, mm-hmm. his name? I was like, listen, not to brag, but like I was ahead of the curve lysoling you before coronavirus was even a goddamn thing. I'm not even kidding. I was thinking about that the other day. Like you lysoling your men and like also just, you know, the world in your bed and stuff. I'm like, she was really onto something. Like, I was ahead of the game. I created the habits, and now I don't need to worry about it. So, Bumble Bart, thank you for reaching out. Um, who knows what's in our future? He's also been real, like, active on Instagram about Black Lives Matter, which I think is just about the hottest thing you could ever do. Honestly, yeah. I support it. Love you. All right, I don't love him. Everybody calm down. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's revisit for just a quick second. I'm sure you haven't heard from him, but I give would, us a qu- <laughs> I would just like to know, we have this outline for this episode, and so Rachel typed it all up, and so when I was reading it, it literally says, Herbert, dishwashing weirdo, which is just the perfect way literally, to describe this man. It's literally who he is. <laughs> he was um, so weird. The answer is absolutely the frick not. I have not heard from this man. Um, if I saw him on the street, I would run the other way. Yeah. Gosh, maybe I'd just be like, hey, are you still allergic to alcohol? Have Herbert, she alcohol? lied! That's a lie. <laughs> Honestly, oh, I have boy. nightmares of, like, all of my horrendous Tinder <laughs> online dating, like, dates in one room. Oh, and my often, God. I feel like if just he was in that room alone, that would be enough for me to just, like... Yeah. Control. Herbert. I mean, maybe he found his woman. They like bang I mean, and then vacuum. I don't know. <laughs> I, I I'm still hoping that that was all just an elaborate prank to see like if he yeah acting skills. Like I really like maybe he's like a stand up comic and he's using this for his bit just like we are I, right now. Like I hope so. I really hope so <laughs> because if not, I sincerely like fear it's weird. Yeah. Life. Uh, so Herbert, what a guy. And then I followed up your Herbert story. It did not live up, but I told the story of the arm bite guy yes. who mm-hmm. bit my arm last summer in a moment of passion. All right, that's ridiculous. But anyway, I hadn't heard from him at all. I was kind of offended because he seemed like definitely the type to like reach out in quarantine because like we're bored. Your and he, as well. and so I'm saying like, if you bit my arm, you can send me a text message, yeah, like, but he didn't. So I was kind of like, okay, weird flex. And then the other day, I got super drunk and I snapped him and it was a great little back and forth. So he's back in the picture. <laughs> back on the list, the rotation. He might make another slideshow. So we'll just have to see. But yeah, I'm glad like some people are coming back. Who knows when this episode airs, like Herbert, Tim, they might come crawling back. It could be the lucky I had, factor. I had some other, other characters we didn't talk about from our past come. Why didn't really? Happen? The Rona mm. is just really... If there was ever a time to, like, slide back into a DM that you didn't think you were going to, now that I've done it, like, who the hell am I kidding? You know? Honestly, yeah. And even my mom was, like, I was telling her about, like, these, you know, characters. Yeah. Back, and she's, like, do you really think, like, it's good to talk to them again? And I was, like, I don't know. Maybe this one guy, like, grew a personality in the last five months. And maybe he's right. And, like, actually, you know, interesting to talk to. And she's, like... Kaylee Nicole you are so bad (laughs) like also you never know also like the context of meeting a person like maybe they were having an off week or month like maybe they were going through it you just never know I think it's always good to have your roster yes you say that to me all the time all hot girls have a roster that's just how it is how it is and now they're just getting longer and longer the longer this goddamn pandemic stretches on and you know what that's the silver lining for me so I'm glad we're on the same page there you go (laughs) Oh, but also, so we wanted to obviously catch you guys up on the new quarantine love affairs of our lives because just a lot has been happening and Kay and I really haven't caught up like the details. We've been keeping each other updated, but like we haven't gone through it. And online dating in a quarantine situation is very different than the normal scene. So what you're about to hear from us, I guess, is just a rundown, some heavy hitters of the past three months or so in no particular order, just to kind of show you the possibilities of what this time could be, you know? (laughs) I'm just so excited. But before we totally get into that, we want to go through, of course, our Her Reflections of the Week. If you are a new listener, 
every week me and my guest go through the HER acronym, H is for happy, E is for excited, and R is for recent realization. So, Kay, I'm going to kick it over to you. What is your happy for the week? So, um, I feel like I've been in a pretty, like, consistently happy mood since last time I talked to you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this week I got to actually go see a friend I haven't seen since quarantine started. And I got to do, like, a little photo shoot for him oh. for his big boy job. Love. So I got to take, like, his headshot. We went to the park. And it was just really nice to kind of, like, be behind the camera again and do something I used to do so regularly. Um, I was just going to say, because it had been a minute for you. Yes, I have not taken photos in so long. And so it's just really nice to actually like, go in and do that and then see my friend and just catch up. Like, because he totally. moved to like, his apartment. He's living in Hoboken now. And then I'm cool. here. We just kind of talked about, like, hey, we're kind of adults now. How's it going? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was really great. Just That's wonderful. Little, we'll see. My life, That's the know? thing. Like, slowly but surely, we're getting there. And it is. It just makes you happy. Oh, I'm happy for you. Um, mine this week, such a good week for so many reasons, and we will get into all of those later on, but I finally got all my stuff back. I hadn't moved out of my apartment in the Bronx at Fordham since quarantine. I literally came with, like, a backpack thinking it was spring breaks, like all of us, um, and then everything happened, so I was living on, like, one pair of leggings and, like, my old high school t-shirts for the last, so it just feels good to, like, have my clothes back and, like, my speaker and books and, like, all the just stuff, like, I forgot I had, so Mm -hmm. it's good to just have it all back. It was also a nice moment of closure to, like, pack up the apartment. It was so sad and weirdly emotional, not weirdly emotional, I was very much expecting for it to be. Yes. But... I don't know. I think I needed that because there was nothing like conclusive about senior year. And then this was finally kind of like, okay, we're moving on now and that's okay. And also things happen. So I'm excited to talk about that a little later. We'll get into it. (laughs) I'm excited to talk about that. Um, I'm also excited to hear about your E. What are you excited about? Okay. I said this last time on our last episode. (laughs) Such a full circle. Full circle moment. I think, I don't even know if I said like, if it was happy or excited, but I am getting my hair done next week. Yay. And I'm so excited because it's been like four months, almost yeah. five months, and I'm like about to just shave it off at this point. <laughs> like my hair has never been this long in my so entire long. life. It's three different colors. Mama Kirk <laughs> came for me and was like, hey, your hair looks like your bricks. Like every single brick is a different color, just like your hair. And I was like, oof. <laughs> Love you too, mom. Tell me something I don't know. No, I feel everyone's been going through it with the hair, though. You're not alone, but oh. Yes. happy I'm for you have like I don't really do a lot of like self-pampering so like my getting my hair done is always like that time for me yeah so I'm really excited about that. oh I'm excited so for you huge. such a full circle though too you know what I mean with the hair I love that because you came fresh with a new color it was so perfect that was actually the last time I got my hair done was that no. <gasps> wait oh my god so that was a long time ago <laughs> god love you it's coming it's soon you're gonna feel like a new person Oh, I'm so happy for you. really well, honestly. What about you, Miss Rage? What are you excited for? I'm excited about the future in general, more specifically the job search. I don't mean to brag. I mean, I do not have a job, so, like, I have no right to brag about, like, my job application skills whatsoever, but I feel like my cover letter writing game has just, like, been upped a few notches because I haven't been... I just feel like, obviously, now there's more time to focus on it, so I've taken more time to, like, write a really... what I think is a very persuasive cover letter... And I'm just expecting to have, like, all these PR firms, like, fighting for me I mean, in a few weeks' time. So. I'm hoping. So, I don't know. And I'm, like, doing the thing where you act, I'm actually writing different cover letters for each application. Like, usually I just use the same one and, like, send it right. out. But I was like, that isn't working. <laughs> so, let's get a little bit more specific. So, I'm just kind of focusing a lot of my energy there. And it feels good and productive. And I'm excited about it. Yeah, Stressed, it's but excited. You. you know? It's great. What about your realization, Kay? What are we realizing? I think... What I've been realizing, I think, like, for me personally, I've always been someone that has to have a plan of some sort. I think mm-hmm. at least for my life, there's always been, like, okay, like, this is going to be the next step for me. Mm-hmm. So, like, when I was 13, I was, like, okay, I'm going to go to college in New York. High school, I was, like, okay, I'm going to work towards going to college in New York. Yeah. In college, I was, like, okay, I'm going to get this degree, work towards making a career. And then now that I'm graduated, I'm, like, I don't have a plan mm-hmm. because... Miss Rona had other um, plans for me. Yes. So I think what I've just been realizing is that um, this has been such a huge transition, like graduating and like mm-hmm. finding a place and really just trying to settle into like the new normal. Um, I think for me, my biggest realization is 
just taking things a day at a time yeah and really trying to live like day by day and just seeing what happens and like being okay with not having a plan right now and that's so. so smart and I think it's I, it's kind of all we can do right now but I think it's so true like finding kind of developing the skills of the go with the flow mentality of like live in the moment and do that like this is the perfect time to kind of work that muscle so that when things do go back to normal we're just going to be like better people I really think so oh I feel inspired I'm happy for you Craig my realization okay I literally the only thing I wrote on the outline kids like what the hell I wrote am I dot 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 a home wrecker (laughs) okay I'll explain so father's day was recently and I don't know about you but I love Father's Day Instagram posts. Like, I just think it's so fun to go through and, like, see more specifically, like, all the hot guys who may or may not have hot dads and, like, to see how it works out. To be like, will this person look, like, as hot when he's old? Like, it's just a fun game for me to play. I love Father's Day. I'm sorry if that's weird. I'm not sorry at all. It's just who I am. So, as I said before, I, like, okay, this is, like, a long story, but anyway, I was out for Father's Day with my dad and we were all like drinking. My sister was working at the pizza bar place that she works at and we were just getting drinks all night long. We were having the best time. So like by the time we got home, like I was pretty gone and it was, I felt great. Like I was alive and (laughs) okay. So I was going through my Instagram and like something just came over me. I was literally replying to like all these Instagram stories, just like hearts and stuff to like all these old tinder matches and like guys I had gone on dates with but like haven't spoke to would be like happy father's day to your dad like I was just really I don't know what came over me going for it it was like the four strawberry daiquiris I had that was coming over me but it was so fun but then I quickly found so one of the guys was a guy from from a slideshow I keep referencing these slideshows on my finsta I always make slideshows of my love interest to keep my friends all on the same page which I recommend doing I think it's such a smart way to keep all your girlfriends on the same page Okay, I need you to make a slideshow for me. Updated slash, I will just for you because I want one so bad for you. I do. So but anyway, this guy was on a slideshow from like last year. We dated. We I think we only went out like one or two times, and it was like last October maybe ish. Whatever. He was like a very fratty bro, but he was just fun. Like he was a fun time, and his dad was like so cute, and I was like, oh my god, your dad's so cute. Like happy Father's Day. Hope all is well. Like did my whole thing with like yellow hearts because I think yellow hearts is like the most innocent heart color. That's just like. like Mm-hmm. so he just liked the message and that was kind of it and I was like okay that's fair but then I refreshed my thing and he posted this big like tribute to his girlfriend that I didn't know he had so I was like oh no like I totally just slid in his dance and he has this like nice pretty girlfriend who he probably loves and loves him and then I was stalking her Instagram and they just they've been in love for a minute and I just had no idea so I'm like Oh, I feel so bad, but I couldn't, like, re-slide into the DMs and be like, so sorry, I didn't realize. Like, I just didn't know how to handle it. It it sucked. I was so mad at myself. Oh, my gosh. I'm, like, getting so (laughs) red talking about it. I'm, like, I really was stressed out because, like, I did it. Like, I would never. Like, I wasn't, like, I'm not in love with him. I I didn't, like, hold the candle for him in any way. But, like, I just thought his dad was cute. He looked good in the picture. I was, like, I'm going to send this. And now I feel bad. So I guess my greater question to you, Kay, is, like, If you're following these guys on Instagram, maybe on Snapchat, like, when do you delete the guy? Like, also, is it rude now if I unfollow him? I checked, he's still following me. So it's like, I feel like we're at the point where I can unfollow, though. Like, I don't know. You seem happy. Like, I'm not. What do you think? I don't know. That's a really good question. I feel like I genuinely don't, like, give out my Instagram handle. I mean, I feel like yeah you said that it's last time. more common that yeah I have been um or like guys have asked for it more yeah I guess like to prove I'm a real person which is totally fine yeah uh, but I feel like usually I wouldn't follow if like we had stopped talking and there was like a lull in conversation okay gosh, like if they do have a girlfriend now but it's right. interesting that he still follows you and he has a girlfriend. Like well, that's what I wanted to check. Follow you first. That's what I mean. Because I was like, okay, if he unfollowed me, then I'll unfollow him and it'll be fine. Like, no hard feelings. I'm not saying like, oh, how dare he? It's just like, okay, that's a natural thing. But it's like, especially now that I just DM'd him, like, what if he checks and realizes that I did unfollow? Is he going to think it's just because I didn't get a response? And like, he turned me, t- like, I'm just like really overthinking it. And then I was going through, like, there's a lot of guys who it's like, I have no idea what they're up to now. It's been months. Right. It's been years. So it's like, when do you just like, unfollow? there also is this one guy I went on a date with, like, oh my God, like a year and a half ago. And I still follow him on Instagram, like for whatever reason. And yeah. Like, like each other's pictures. So like, I don't know. It's just, and he has a girlfriend he's like totally in love with now. And like, see, it's so interesting know. to it's me. Weird. 
yeah, I feel like now I'm at the point in like my online dating life where it's like the next phase has happened where like people are in relationships now that maybe I dated in the past and it's just like I just don't know how to handle it. Like it was a weird, like, oh my god moment for me to right. be like, oh, I so and then I'm like feeling bad about her, but like she doesn't care. Like they're in love. He, they look really, really cute and happy, and I'm happy for them. But I just felt so awkward about it. Am I a home wrecker on Father's Day? <laughs> You know, it happens. It's fine. So we're getting over it. I might, I don't know, I might keep it around. They look happy. Like, it's a good, like, inspo for me. Like, this is the goals, you know? Whatever. Exactly. So that was my realization of, I guess we need to figure out what that, I don't know. It just yeah, do what feels right, I guess. That's, please let me know, because I. I know. Whatever people think, please do let us know, because I'm very curious about it. Anyway. Okay. That was a good, good round of reflections. I feel like we learned a lot. Um, we really ran the gamut there. I love that segment because you really talk about a lot of stuff. Okay. Now let's move into another favorite of mine, Swoon of the Week. I almost didn't put a Swoon of the Week this week because we have like real life swoons that we're definitely going to talk about, but I, I literally can't help it. It's just so much fun to like see who everybody's crushing on. So, okay. Take it away. Okay. Mine is like so random and so weird. Like, <laughs> I was literally thinking about this last night and I was trying to like come up with a swoon. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna really like come for Rachel and just show her like the inner workings of my mind. I love it. Uh, so I, because of quarantine, I've been on TikTok, like guilty admission, it's fine. <laughs> but there's this one guy that's on TikTok and his name is Ben and he, his handle is Ostrich Plug. <laughs> And he basically runs, like, a rescue ranch out of his backyard in Texas. And he's just, like, the most chaotic, like, good energy of a person. Like, so true. he's not even, like, the hottest man alive. He's just so cute and hilarious. Like, this man mm-hmm. could totally post me tomorrow, and I would say yes in a heartbeat. Um, <laughs> but he's just, like, so, I just, someone, like, just everyone go watch his videos, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Like, he's just so random and funny. Yeah. Um but I like love his videos he's so cute and he's also really committed to like protecting animals and like rescuing them and like rehabilitating them and like releasing them back if they can be um a huge like decision I've made since corona corona I almost said corona team <laughs> corona team started is I actually went vegan um and I've been pretty committed to it I'd say um so I think that's just something I'm realizing too is like how much like animals mean to me especially after reading a ton of articles about like the meat industry right now and not being able to Mm -hmm. keep up with like the demand slash being shut down because of the virus and like how many animals they were just literally killing because they couldn't even take care of them and just all like that going to waste I don't know it just really really bothered me like super deeply I decided to just start reducing the intake slowly and then I just finally like cut it off and it's been a really great decision that's so admirable um, like that is a big lifestyle decision to make and I just think that's wonderful I'm so proud of you and so like that's been cool and then even um my spoon man he rescued some like broiler tricks which are literally the ones that people eat and um he was saying like I think a lot of people have told me they're genetically incapable of living longer than eight weeks when they're supposed to be slaughtered and he's like, I want to see if they do live long, if, like, we take care of them. And they just made it over the eight-week mark, and they're still Yay. alive. So, like, It yeah. really is a heartwarming swoon. I think this is such a yeah. good pick, a unique pick, but with he's, a good message. Yes. He's so we love cute. Ben. He's so weird, and I love him. And if anybody knows him and wants to hook me up with them, I'd really appreciate it, because I'm kind of obsessed with him. But. You heard it here first. No, and you're so right. It's just, it's chaotic energy, but the best kind of chaotic energy. Like, he's so sweet. You could just tell you sent me a few of his videos, yes. and I'm just like, <laughs> I get it. Please just watch this and, like, understand why. I, I see know. it, and I feel it. But Great pick. Doing? Great pick. Okay, so my pick this week is Bubba Wallace who I sort of knew of because my dad is like a huge NASCAR fan. We are a big NASCAR household. And so anyway, he is the only African-American driver at the top level of NASCAR. So first of all, like what an accomplishment. He's also just like super hot. I put a picture of him on our outline so Kay could see him. Like he's just a hot guy. Like there's just, there's whatever. But there's so much more to this swoon. So I'm excited, not excited, but I'm like interested to get your take on it. So the only African-American driver at the top level of NASCAR, he's what Ava DuVernay might call the first only different FOD, a FOD, I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't know. This is like a term that I'm reading about in Elaine Weltraut's book. I have my visual aid here. 
Yes. Because she was, like, the first black editor-in-chief of Vogue, whatever. Teen Vogue. I'm getting ahead of myself. The point is, I think there's so much pressure on being, like, that first only different kind of thing to represent an entire race sometimes. And I just think some recent events have made this, like, startlingly clear. So I wanted to give you the story, Kay, in case you didn't know. So there's good news and bad news about things happening in NASCAR in light of the Black, Black Lives Matter movement. The good thing is that NASCAR recently banned all displays of Confederate flags, which, like, kind of about time, but also NASCAR is a very redneck thing and so much redneck culture. Like, I, that sounds so ridiculous to say, but it's true. Is like, wave the Confederate flag, which is so screwed up. I have on here, literally, like, growing up, my not because of my family, but because of my high school, I would say, like, kids would fly Confederate flags off the back of their pickup trucks, like, in Pennsylvania. We're not even in the South. And I remember being so confused as to, like, why this was a thing we were celebrating, but it just seemed so normal. So I'm just, I bring that up just to say it's so ingrained. And I think right. it's, like, finally, we're kind of coming to our senses as a nation. So, like, A plus to NASCAR, long overdue, but I think speaking to that kind of crowd, what I'm calling the redneck crowd is an important message to be sending to an important group of people who otherwise aren't getting it. You know what I mean? Right. So that was good NASCAR news. The disgusting, horrifying, terrible NASCAR news was that on the evening of Sunday, June 21st, so literally on Father's Day, just this past week, at the Talladega Speedway, um, a noose was found in Bubba Wallace's garage. Someone literally hung like a rope in the shape of it. So disgusting, terrible. Yeah not even worth discussing because there's nothing to say except for that it's heinous. Um, but there was a really nice display from all the other NASCAR drivers at the start of the race. They all pushed Bubba Wallace's car to the start line, like together in this beautiful act of solidarity and kind of standing with the hashtag yeah. I stand with Bubba was all over Twitter. They brought it on the track. It was a whole thing. And then after all this kind of went down, he, I don't know if it was a tweet or from an interview, but he said, sorry, I'm not wearing my mask, but I wanted to show whoever it was, you're not going to take away my smile and that I'm going to keep on going. And I was like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think, yes. I don't know. And I've read a lot about this incident and it was kind of like, everyone's mostly saying, thanks for doing this, whatever asshole did it, because you're getting so much opportunity for so much growth within the sport and the community and everyone's banding together behind Bubba Wallace in such a beautiful way that it's not going away anytime soon and I think I was just it was a overall a heartwarming story even though it was so disgusting and terrible swoon of the week I think that response is the most swoon worthy thing right yes. so we stand with Bubba that's fabulous wonderful we love him he's super hot and he's doing big things for Yes. A group of people who need to hear these messages, I would Absolutely. say. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so we're swooning for Bubba. We're swooning for Ben. Another great round. I'm never mad at that segment. I love it so much. I'm all smiley to think about. Right? It's such a swoon. I love it. Okay. Now let's move right along. I kind of previewed this a little bit. We want to do a content catch up, mostly talking about white allyship and what we're kind of reading to educate ourselves about the movement and how we as white girls can help. Um, so I'll start us off. I told you I'm reading more than enough Elaine Weltroth. I talked about this so much before. It, she is such an inspiration. You should definitely follow her on Instagram because I just think her content is great overall. I've learned a lot from her. Her book is a wonderful read. I'm just learning a lot. I also read Thick, which is an essay collection by Tressy McMillan Cottom. And this reminded me of my like English major days which yes. just passed me but it's like nice essay collection of more like intellectual I want to say like it really makes you think and like dissect it and I wanted to like talk about it in a classroom which I think is important um yeah. to kind of get those kind of vibes out and then I have I know why the cage bird sings oh, my Angelo which I have never read I read it so, I think in high school and honestly just yeah I've never read it so that's next up on the list I'm excited about it yeah, just learning a lot. I'm really just happy that there's like this like nationwide book club happening right now where we can all talk about reading these books that we probably should have been a long time ago, but it's just right. better late than never, you know? Definitely. What about you? Um, it's been really inspiring to see um, just like the surge of wanting change. You know, yeah. I feel like we've seen so many injustices for so long, like just thinking about Ferguson and like, you mm -hmm. know, it was all like hot and like available for yeah a week and then everyone just like forgot about it or just kind mm -hmm. of whatever which is horrible and then now mm -hmm. 
I think everyone's just saying like, we've really had enough and this is just not okay. Yeah. And, like, I think a lot of more white people are realizing too, like we really don't know as mm-hmm. much as we need to know and should know. Totally. Um, so that's really been what I've been thinking about mainly a lot. Like I decided to actually take a little bit of an Instagram break mm-hmm. and start reading the White Fragility book. Because um, yeah. I think for me, like social media, yes, visual aid. <laughs> I think for me, like social media is a tricky one for me because I mm-hmm. also, I'm like someone who doesn't want to rely on other people posting for me to get my education. Me be yeah. like, okay, like, I read this one article on Instagram. I'm super woke now, you know, yeah. so I think just, I've been really taking the time to kind of like step back and work mm-hmm. on myself and really just try to like deconstruct my mind and really totally. see, like, especially reading white fragility. It's really helping me kind of break things mm-hmm. down and understand how like, these certain biases I've had and not recognized for a long time or mm-hmm. things in my life that I never really questioned are kind of like the harsh realities of people of color and totally. um it's been really helpful and I think also just not really being super wrapped up in Instagram or Facebook especially Facebook like yep. it's been helpful to kind of just work on myself and really pursue like a change for me and not just relying on the people of color I follow on Instagram or relying on other people to like educate me like for me to actually go yeah. and read for myself and search for myself I feel like that has been a lot more helpful for me just like taking yeah. it upon myself to go and make a change if that makes sense a thousand percent I think that's a really great way to put it because that's something I've been struggling with being like this is I can kind of identify when I need a social media break and I do it with Snapchat a lot because I can just tell like it's getting too much. I'm like too obsessive about one thing or I'm too worried about this person. Right. Like whatever the case is, I can tell when it's happening and I know it's been happening with Instagram for a long time. Yeah. But I feel like until hearing you speak on it, I kind of felt like I didn't want to shut all of it out because I was like, it's making me uncomfortable to be on Instagram. It's making me feel like frustrated and everything. But I was like, maybe it's important for me to work through these emotions. And I think sometimes that is super true. Like it's important for me to be confronted with it on such a regular basis that even when I'm doing the act that I normally do for like escapism and to get away from like my thoughts, it's confronting me over and over and over again. I think there's something really powerful and healthy and good about that. But at the same time, right, you, you have to, this is a long run kind of deal. We're not talking about a week of you know what I mean? Like escapism. We're talking about like long change. That's, and I really think that it's happening. I don't, I hope that's not a naive way to think of it, but I feel like something feels so different now, you know? So I think the way you're phrasing it is really helpful for me to hear. I think especially Facebook, I need to get off Facebook. It's just not, it's not helping me. And if I can't help myself then I can't help my family and the people who need to hear these good messages, you know what I mean? It starts with you. Yeah. And then that's the thing too, is like, making a change for yourself looks different for every person. Yeah. I think for me, my biggest fear has been like, I don't want to just repost something and then be performative you and wash be like, your hands hey, of it. Like, you yeah. know, I'm done my part. Like I really wanted to take as much action as I could, whether that was like signing a petition or texting mm-hmm. or emailing or like just sitting down and kind of challenging like my inner yeah. mind and like my inner comforts, you know? Totally. So, Totally. And it's inspiring to see. I just think I'll end with this because we could talk about this forever. It definitely could be its own thing, but and I think it's important we're talking about it, but I just, I feel very reassured to be around like-minded people. And I think I'm so proud of the Fordham community, specifically like Fordham RAs, who I follow on Instagram and who have been teaching me so much. And it's just such a strong, powerful group of people, group of women really, who are teaching, and and black women, like I've learned so much just from my own peer group, and I think that's such a powerful thing, I think I always knew we were in a cool little subgroup, Mm -hmm. but now seeing the level of dedication, and and just like how driven everyone is, is, it really is mind-blowing to me, I'm so happy to sort of even be a part of it, yeah, yeah, totally, oh, good con, okay, I'm glad, because we really hadn't talked much about Instagram and all, everything that's happening, so I'm glad we got that out one more piece of content completely unrelated but that's related to what we're going to talk about netflix just released season two of dating around which is my favorite dating show probably ever i love it so much kate you haven't seen it right yeah no so i'll give you kind of like the rundown each episode is with a different like we'll say the star of the episode so if i was the star of the episode i go on the exact same date with five different guys and they kind of shoot it It's, it's shot very dramatically it almost looks like a like a scripted show because just the lighting is good. Like they have it all set up really well and it's just very cinematic, I would say, but they kind of 
transition in and out as all the dates are happening. So it seems like they're all happening at the same time. Everyone wears the same thing, like the whole thing. Yeah. And then at the end of the first date, the star gets to pick like one second date. So that's the whole thing. Like who's she going to pick? Da, da, da. And I just really am into the way it's done. It makes me want to go out yeah. and date because it's so fun to watch people just having these like giddy little moments of like maybe a new thing. And then the not so great moments. I feel like I learn a lot about like my own dating style and what I want to use and what I want to not use. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. just such a fun watch. And it really does just make me want to get out in New York City and date. Don't you miss it? You're kind of doing it. I'm kind of doing it, but yeah, there honestly, like, there's just nothing like having your Carrie Bradshaw moment mm. and dating in your 20s and so in New true. York City. And honestly, like, I feel like dating in New York City is so different than any other place. Mm -hmm. Like, I tried doing Tinder back home in LA, and it just was like not the same. I don't know, maybe. Yeah. I just, me and LA don't clash, but like. <laughs> New York City no, is just where I at. totally agree for like home for me is northeastern Pennsylvania where it's like the high school and the neighboring high school and that's the only people you're getting um but even so it's surprising to hear that even in another big city it's not the same I just think there is something special about New York I think it really is it's the place to be we're gonna talk all about it we're gonna talk about Kay's quarantine dating I'm so excited but first I have to say I think this is such a phenomenal stat and I'm so intrigued by it I, I'm very into like the demographics of our listeners right. and I'm just like really into tracking it and how it goes lately. And for the last, I would say last few months, which we've only been doing this for a few months, but like probably yeah. of all time, about 70% of our listeners are men. And this is a blog cast I called the Her job. Life, literally like we are called the Her Life blog cast and the vast majority are men listening. Like That's men so in the like 23 to 27 year old men. I'm like so surprised by that. That's um, hard. That's, you know? I mean, hopefully they're learning about the ladies and the ladies' mind. I have some theories. Most of my theories have to do with like, I feel like that's kind of what I lead with, especially now on the dating apps. It's like, oh, what are you doing to pass the time? What are you doing? It's like, oh, I'm doing this blog and blogcast kind of thing. So then it's like, ooh, right. let me listen. Mm -hmm. So it's cool to see the guys who actually do listen, but I feel like more are continuously listening than I realized. And I think some of your dates are listening because you've mentioned this, you've been on before. <laughs> oh I'm just like so intrigued by this demographic. I, I don't know why. It's just such a, it's such a thing now. I'm just surprised, but I like it. Like, I feel like hopefully they're well, learning. I'm a little flattered. I don't know, but also like, girls, yeah. where are you at? Like, we're supposed to be talking to you. Yes, like, this is for you specifically <laughs> so anyway that's that's the breakdown i had to tell you amazing so who knows who's listening so this will be even more interesting to get into what we're about to get into the okay. main segment for today's episode is do it for the girls who can't which is a segment we introduced i think just last week with emma because she has been doing a little dating herself we're gonna hear about that next week not to worry um but essentially you just Give me your anecdotes. Tell me what you're doing for all the girls who are stuck in small towns who can't be out there actually meeting guys. Do it for the girls who can't. Tell us your story. Live your truth. We both have things to say. Do I you want to? I feel like you have some. You want to do me first, honestly. Okay. I really. I'm so nervous. Okay, so by and large, this has been like a quiet quarantine. I haven't left Pennsylvania, except of course to pack up my things. But recently because of that things changed and I got to meet up with I will just say like an old flame he was also featured on a slideshow so it's like nobody knew um mm -hmm. I like don't know how much to say I it was just good my point is it was nice to see him again I think it would have been nice to see anybody again you know what I mean just <laughs> in like not romantic but like in a kind of setting because it was just nice it was a nice way to say goodbye to my apartment yes. I, I have no regret it was like Proper you sense. know yeah I just feel like it was a good like cap of the year the year of rage I think I've grown a lot in the last year like if we did this episode a year ago there wouldn't be much to talk about I don't know I'm just happy it was a do it for the girls who can't moment because I wasn't sure if I should like go through with it but it was just good catching up with him etc and my favorite part of the whole evening at one point <laughs> I'm dying. he looked at me and he was like wait are you gonna talk about this on the blog <laughs> Does he listen? 
So he could be listening right now. He's in the 70%, Kay. <laughs> He, he's in the 70 percent i really hope he is listening i don't know because, i feel honestly, like i didn't do it justice i just don't want to go into detail you know yeah it's kind of you know a good, good private moment <laughs> yeah just let your imagination it was just a, it was nice yes i like i love to see how far you've come to like, mm. i remember you were talking about like tinder in the first place like many many years ago yeah months ago and so it's just really cool to see like how far you've come and like grow I know. as a person like, in the dating world and becoming like so I'm much proud of myself and I think a lo- genuinely I'm not just saying this because you're on zoom with me right now like I think so much of that is because of you because you were a really good example for me and Emma too you know what I mean like I think you were someone that we could be like she's out there doing it living her life and she's using the apps to do it and we can do that too and now we are Ugh, okay just- we love you Anyway, but now my, go ahead. So you've like, you've been doing like FaceTime dates too, right? Yeah. I've been doing a lot actually. So yeah, it's just, it's kind of been good and bad. Like there's good ones and bad ones, but the thing is I can't tell. I feel like you can really tell when it's a bad date because I don't know how to say what I'm trying to say. (laughs) There have been some, what I would call like mediocre FaceTime dates where it's like, okay, it wasn't bad, but it was kind of awkward, but of course it's going to be awkward. You're meeting someone for the first time, like on FaceTime. Exactly. But then it makes you like, but then when you have like a really, really bad one where it's just like super awkward and strange, like for example, he might be drunk off his ass. I had one where he was so gone before we even got on the phone. He would, okay, I'm not exaggerating, he would stop mid-sentence and be like, what was I talking about? I literally forgot. And I was like, what planet are you on? Like, I don't know if he was super, like, crossfeed. I have no idea. He was next level. And I was like, where are we? Like, it was so weird. So then it's like, after that happened, I, like, went back to some of, like, what I thought were mediocre. And I was like, that was a great date. Like, who are we kidding? Like, we talked the whole time. He was sober. Like, things were great. Right. Like, (laughs) by comparison so I don't know it's been like hit or miss I've struggled and I talked about this on a past episode I struggle with like I I can't tell like we're all dating multiple people right like when do you cap it like if we're not gonna meet anytime soon because I'm in Pennsylvania and you're in like New York or x city like there's no potential for us to meet up anytime soon am I expected to like lock it down with you just like texting and facetiming no right like we're all facetiming lots of people right yeah then some of them get mad at me like they make comments and they're just like you know what i'm saying so some of them have ended bad because they're like you don't even care and i was like we're in quarantine what am i gonna see anyways right like we're all just out here having fun passing the time right right i don't know i mean especially if you're like not meeting in person then it's kind of like that's what i mean I can't really be mad if I'm talking to multiple people because how do I know, like, we're going to have a vibe if we're talking? Right. And, like, I'm not, like, I'm totally, if you're on the apps, you're talking to multiple people. That's what I'm saying. Like, how can you be mad about that? And how is it any different than, like, just dating regularly? Like, no one that I know just dates one person at a time. Right. Like, you don't lock it down until it gets serious. And nothing can get serious because we're in quarantine. Exactly. Weird. Why are men allowed? Why are men allowed? Men allowed. Such a mess. Anyway, but to circle back to my to my do it for the girls who can't anecdote, my main thing now is just trying not to like convince myself I'm in love with him. I know I'm not in love with him, but I do this thing every time whenever there's like a new moment with a new person. I'm like, we're gonna like there was such a vibe and I feel it in my soul and like he's probably in love with me now and we're gonna mm-hmm. get married. So like I just have to be like, don't freak out and like it's okay that he's not texting me all the time because yeah. it was just w- one night. It wasn't like a, okay, I didn't do anything bad. Everyone relax. Okay, stop. Okay, we're done. <laughs> it wasn't like a one night stand. We're done. Okay, sorry. Okay. It's over. But oh we need to hear about you. What is your, like, I'm just throwing it at you. You can tell us as much or as little about as many or as few guys as okay. you want. <laughs> I want to start off with the bad dates I've been on. Okay. Because honestly, like, not to, like, toot my own horn, but, like, I haven't really had a lot of bad Tinder dates. Like, mm-hmm. I've had weird ones, awkward ones, or, like, yeah. average ones. Right. But, like, these last few people I've seen have just been, like, yikes. Yeah. But, like, I, I won't go into full detail about it, because, wow. Um, there was this <laughs> one guy I was talking to, and um, 
I feel like he needs a name, but like, does he even deserve a name? I don't. That's know. the thing. Like, does he deserve a character on the blogcast if he sucks? He really just like. So for those people who like know me, know that I'm pretty like relaxed, mellow, like really totally hippie. One might say. You might. Um, and so I was talking to this guy, and I was like, "Yeah, so like, tell me, like, you know." what's your dream job? Like, if you could do anything in the world, what would you do? That's usually a question I ask on dates, is I really like to hear about people's passions and, like, what drives them. Um, and he's like, yeah, I don't really know if I have a passion. I just really love money. And I was like, not your vibe. Yeah. Oof. And I was like, well, what about, like, what do you do now? And he's like, I just kind of, like, make money here and there. And I was like, okay. Is he a drug dealer? This I, is such a weird... <laughs> I don't know. He like Okay, also, another side note, like, guys who consider, like, smoking a personality trait, I really don't vibe with. This guy was one of those guys where it's like, yeah, like, that's... Say it louder. I... Who I am. I just smoke. I just vibe. Like, let's spark up. Like, uh, that's fine. Live your, tr- if that is something you're into, and I think that's an important thing to bring up in a first date, because it's like, that's part of your lifestyle, whatever, like, that's important, yeah. but it can't be the only thing. It's not your personality. Yes. You know? It's a part of your life, but it isn't, it, I, if it's your, if it is just your life, like, something's wrong. Yeah. So, like, that was whatever. So, I was like, okay. Um, Because I also was telling him, like, one of my, like, quirky dreams in life is kind of just go off the grid for like six months and like yeah live travel around Asia like and give up as many possessions of mine as possible like just yeah go with clothes and like that's it and he was like yeah I never would do that like that's kind of just yeah you're different you and him are too different I was like okay yeah and then also when we were talking he was like we were talking about like the current state of everything and like the um humanitarian crisis going on yeah and he was saying, like, yeah, like, I'm not really, like, a social justice, like, hardcore guy, but, like, you know, I do really care about, like, inequalities, and I was, like, okay, like, I mean, that's good, because I feel like a lot of people our age didn't really care for, like, the longest Mm -hmm. time, and they kind of only really have started to care, and then he says, well, you know, it's kind of hard for people to care when it doesn't directly affect them, Mm. and I was, like, (laughs) <laughs> he is the poster child of white privilege <laughs> that is his character like, yeah some people just don't have time to vote and I'm Ooh. like okay yeah but people should make time to vote so I was just like yeah you know what I really don't ever want to see you again yeah I will say this Kay. I almost like I don't respect him because he sucks on so many levels but I almost respect how just unabashed he is about it because as, mm-hmm. like if you have any pulse on American culture right now you know that's not the thing to say no do you know what I'm saying so it's like right. he could have very easily lied and been like yeah it's super important like da, 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 da. like it's easy yeah. enough to like at least fake it I'm not saying that's what we should be doing by any means or like sure. but I'm just saying like you are a special level of like I don't even know what the word is asshole to like yes. really just be so upfront about how gross you are yes i was like yeah so i was a big x next big x i was like yeah no uh please never contact me again um and then also just like really aggressive and like crass like i don't know if i'm just a prissy person but like i really don't like it when guys talk to me about like banging other people slash like just going to the bathroom, like, things like that, where it's just, like, I don't find that funny, really. I don't know you, and, like, you know, I get, like, certain funny situations, but, like, we're on a date, like, let's just stop. Yeah, like, there needs to be a level of etiquette, regardless. Yeah, so that was gross, and then also something that just is my number one pet peeve with people I'm just meeting on dates is guys Mm -hmm. that talk over me or interrupt me, and so this guy and the next guy I'm gonna talk about, like, consistently would ask me like a question about my life and I would maybe get like 10 words into it and then something I would say would like remind them of something they had to say like a story they wanted to tell and they would cut me off and then start no. talking to themselves again and I'm like I I want to hear what I have to say or like I'm yeah. just talking about you because that's fine but like gross 
you know it just something i just hate like yeah please don't interrupt me or talk over me or from like, anyone ask, yeah yeah or don't ask me a question if you don't want to listen to my answer you know what i mean so that's it's been good like discovering things i hate yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they say it's, it's just as important to learn what you don't want as what you do. Exactly. Totally. And then next guy, like, I was talking to him for a while. He also wants to be a screenwriter. Like, it was wow. really cool. A good vibe. Um, and then he got kind of, like, weird over text. Really, like, he was, like, a little too sexual. And I was like, I haven't met you yet. Like, mm -hmm. you can cross that line maybe afterwards. But, like, and so then I meet him. And he's, like, the same vibe of, like, talking over me, interrupting me. like just a lot like it wasn't as bad as the first guy but I was like, yeah. like I haven't spoken hardly at all and like that's fine like I'm not like you know I have to be the center of attention like, no but like yeah, if there's two like, people it should it, be 50 50 yes I'm like either we're not really having a conversation you're just like talking at me mm -hmm. which is fine but like yeah. I can't get to know you and you to get to know me yeah and so then okay. he like texted me yesterday and he was like hey like do you want to hang out again? Like, I'll be back in, because he's, like, been elsewhere writing out porn with me, but he came to the city and, like, wanted to meet me, and then he texted me yesterday. He's, like, so, like, yeah, like, I'm coming back, like, soon, like, we should totally hang out. Mm -hmm. I was, like, oh. I am so bad at being, like, mean, as in saying, like, no. Mm -hmm. Also, I hate being ghosted, so, like, I can't yeah. say that and, like, just ghost him. So, I was, like, hey, like, you know, I think you're really cool, but honestly, I'm just feeling more of, like, a creative friend vibe, because we did have good creative conversations, mm -hmm. so I'd, like, love to get, you know, get to know you more as a friend, but if you're not into that, totally understand, like, whatever, so he replies, like, yeah, honestly, I'm always down to make more friends, like, you're super good cool, response. great, and I was, like, awesome, fantastic, this morning, he texts me, and he's, like, what if we can just be friends that, like, make out? <laughs> Wait, I kind of love that. You're not, like, it's not all the benefits. He just wants, to, just make wants out. to make out. And I was like, how do you feel? I feel irritated <laughs> because I really took the kindness of my soul yeah. to, like, reply to him and not yeah. be rude and just be like, hey, <laughs> not feeling it. And then he just is, like, completely ignores. Yeah. Let's just be friends and make out. The, I don't know why that's the funniest thing ever. Like, he's not asking for a friend with benefits. Like, he doesn't want all the benefits. No. He literally just wants someone to make out with. I feel that. Like, I'm not I mad. It. I respect it. But I'm like, why did you first Say that originally, with... right. Yeah. Like, so I don't know what I'm going to reply to him. Now I kind of want to ghost him for that. Because I'm just like. I mean, he deserves it. I, he we're going to talk. Yeah, we're going to talk all about next week's episode will be our 4th of July special called Left on Red, White, and Blue, which I think is, I'm so excited about. Creative title. But we're going to get so into the whole, like, is ghosting okay during quarantine? So I'm glad you, like, prefaced it. We'll talk about it with Em and Hannah because I'm so curious, like, are the rules different now? Yeah. Do we have more leeway? Like, we'll, we'll get all into it, but I think that's a good way to lead us in. Yes. But <laughs> let's be friends that just make out. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> there's a girl out there for him it might be me like i'm literally not you i will hook you guys up you can have a time and a half <laughs> together but oh my gosh like oh my god it's so funny i love that oh but yeah some some frogs among the princes for Kay yeah. lately it had to happen because honestly the, my my ratio my track record yeah. is like too positive so i kind of feel like this is a universe you gotta give us a chance, you know, yeah, in the playing field, because you're just, have, you're, like, too good at what's going on, so, exactly. you know, it had to happen, She's doing it for us all, growth experience for me, figuring out what I hate in men, yeah, yeah, let's talk about the good, though, let's talk about some, like, positive little quarantine dating happenings, I think okay. we have a specific one in mind, we do, we do, um, so, uh, basically, when I moved, I, redownload a tinder i had been off of it for a minute um okay. and um so i started swiping all the things and i came across this profile of this guy who went to fordham so i was like oh my gosh like Come on. Go <laughs> and um also a redhead which is ah, great check check 
gotta preserve our dying breed you know what i mean um, and then also like his you know you can add your like occupation mm-hmm. it's a chemist and so i was like mm, okay like science boy <laughs> boy create a girl i don't know how this will go right maybe it's an opposite attract moment no, who maybe. knows yeah because usually I'm into guys who are more creative. Yeah. Not like a thing for me, but like, I was like, you know what? I'm a good sport. I was like, right. Both might match. And then we start talking. Um, come to find out this man is not just any old chemist, but he creates candles, perfumes, scents for different places, but specifically Bath and Body Works. And if you anybody knows... If anybody knows me personally, I have a horrific sickness and addiction to Bath and Body Works. Like, I kid you not, I have an entire drawer in my room full of their perfumes. Like, I probably have 30 or 40 of them. Like, not exaggerating. May I ask your favorite scent? Oh, my God. I would say French Lavender and Honey is my favorite, but it's a discontinued scent, R.I.P. Also, the Rose scent. Okay. Favorite. I'm a Japanese cherry blossom girl, but... Well, it's, it's fantastic. So. I love them all. Yeah, I love them all. I have literally 30 to choose from. <laughs> this is incredible. Th- but, like, talk about a match made in heaven. Like, this is a yeah. random, weird obsession that you have. Exactly. And then you find a chemist who freaking works for Bath and Body. Yes, I can't. Was, like, I told him, I was like, oh, my God, you're actually, like, my hero and maybe the coolest person <laughs> I've ever met. And any person that goes with me to the mall, I literally pull them aside and I'm like, hey, like, heart to heart with you. I am not allowed to go into Bath and Body Works. Like, you cannot let me go. I will try and drag you in there. Don't let me do it because as soon as I <laughs> inhale that store air, I black out and then I walk out. Fifty dollars <laughs> out. Of my like, it adds up quick. Afraid. It is such a sickness. Um. So, so yeah, I that's why I needed to explain that because totally. I was so excited when I met someone that actually creates sense Bath and Body Works. <laughs> Um, so we were talking for a while, honestly. I feel like probably longer than I usually talk to people before I like ask them to meet face to face. I personally mm-hmm. really hate talking over text or like yeah. over the phone. I'm just very much an in person kind of person. But totally, you know, quarantine. Yeah. Um, so at first he was like, you know, I don't know, like I wish I could go on a date with you like right away, and I was like, totally get it, you know. Then it turned into, how about a socially distanced picnic? And I was like, yeah, for sure. Like, let's do it. And then it turned into, you know, maybe it doesn't have to be socially distanced. And I was like, okay, sure, whatever. And so it's maybe like two days before we're supposed to go out. And this man texts me and he's like, hey, uh, just want to confess to you. I was like stalking your Instagram and I found out about the podcast you did. And I just want to say, like, I love the sound of your voice. And so at first I'm like, oh, thanks. And then I pause and like choke. And I'm like, which podcast did you hear? <laughs> because I, I, you know, I popped in here and there on the Hurt Life. But I'm just like, right. which one? And he's like, oh, the Tinder one. And I was like, the one. Okay. Wait, can I say something that I remember from this incident? Because you texted me. I have to say this. I'll edit it out if you want to, but I can't not for this moment. Kay texts me a screenshot from this guy of like, I can't even breathe. She sends me a screenshot from this guy of like, just found your podcast, like your voice is so hot, whatever he said. I don't remember what he said. But Kay had not even saved Homeboy's number. Like it was literally just, she didn't even save his contact. And he had gone deep into her tagged photos on Instagram. To find this episode from months ago. <laughs> and she didn't even say this number. I think that was such a badass move. Like, I have never had more respect for you. <laughs> like, she is vetting these guys. Like, I will not save your number until you listen to the whole freaking episode and take note. <laughs> yeah, that's the new role. <laughs> so funny. Oh my god, it's my favorite thing. Um, but no, I'm sure you saved his number by now. You guys are like, yeah, okay, good. My, my rule for myself actually is I don't save a guy's number until I meet them at least once. Because okay. there was, um, what was it? Oh my gosh, I think it was, it's from Monsters, Inc. When Sully names Boo, and then mm-hmm. Mike Wazowski's like, you can't name it, you're gonna get attached to it. 
<laughs> so they're two four. <laughs> I don't say men's numbers until I meet them at least once and decide if I like them or not. I think that is the best rule I have ever heard. That's my rule because I don't want to get all like, oh my god, like someone's so texted me. Because <laughs> like for me, it's like you know, so true. If you're worth my time, I'll save you with a contact because also it's just so annoying to go back and delete contacts later when like so things don't work out. Wait, I, this is my new fit. I'm doing this from now on in my life. This is so <laughs> funny. You're gonna get attached. Deserved attached. <laughs> so yeah. That's right. Oh my god. Well, you have since met him, so the number is saved. Number How are things going with Candleman? Things are great. I'm gonna call him Candleman Cody. Okay. Um. So we went on a picnic together for our first date. Freaking cute. And it was honestly so cute. He um lives in this area like called Sty Town, which is in like the Lower East Side a little bit. And um, there's like this park literally like in the backyard of his building basically oh. it's like the Sudestin oval and there's like a fountain and like the trees it's just nice like just being yeah. outside was fantastic I think that was my first time like outside outside in a really long time yeah um so in his tinder profile he was wearing these like crazy pants with poinsettia prints on them wow and so I told him I was like you should wear those and he's like you think I won't I was like I guess did he wear them so he did he wore these <gasps> pants Stop so it. I was like, wow, I think I'm kind of in love with you a little bit, just for the pants. That's a move. Um, so, oh, also, I have just two blanks. I'm just so excited about points of the pants. But before we were on the state, he was texting me, like, beforehand, and he was like, hey, like, let me know your favorite scents from Bath and Body Works, and I'll make you a candle and bring it. And I was like, time out, time out. Don't joke with me about bath and body works okay don't play. do it you can't play with me about this and he's like no i'm 100 percent serious and so oh i was my like god so i just gave him a few like scents to pick from and then he's texting me like about to meet up at the park and he's like okay great like i'm bringing the candles and i was like candles plural is in plural and he's like yeah i need you three Candleman Cody brings me three candles. This may... Cody? Cody? I... Yeah. So, uh, we get to the park, talking to everything. It's going great. Um, he brings wine and strawberries. I bring him cheeses on request from him. I bring the blankets. It's like a cute little vibe, a cute little moment. Oh. Um, you're equals in this relationship I like this already like this is very healthy and balanced exactly it's like you bring this up in that a whole Love. moment um and so he's like okay so I have your candles they're just at my apartment and I was like oh Cody's got oh, game are they Cody I respect the hell out of that Cody's got game like, so you planned this whole thing like I'm gonna make her the candles and just leave them um, I actually have one lit right now. She is setting the mood. It's rose water and ivy for my Bath and Body Works freaks. <gasps> a classic. Um, so you got to this place, and he gives me the candles, and um, he's like, "How about we light one?" And I was like, "Yeah, great, sure, yeah, we'll light one, whatever." And every single scent he like picked for me was amazing. Amazing. Like he gave me rose water and ivy, which is like my favorite. I love floral love scents. And I also love like the florals with like the wood kind of combined. Amazing. Wait, can All I say something? Ones. Um I had like, rose water and ivy. Sorry, I had rose water and ivy soap in my bathroom when we did our last episode. I remember because you were just like, oh my god, I love this scent. Like this is so good. So like another full circle, I just had to throw it in there. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm gonna cry. Um yeah. Love it. So absolutely incredible up there on the list and so we're hanging out and he's just like yeah so um are you gonna talk about me on the next episode you have with Rachel and I was like Cody knows my name yes Cody knows your name and I was like what the hell and then he started like quoting so many things he was like yeah so um I want to see if I'm like a better kisser than Herbert and I was like you really listened to the whole thing, didn't you? 
And then, oh my gosh, I keep telling the story out of order. I'm sorry, my brain's just the, all over the place. With there's the no games. order, there's no love. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> Truly. Um, so after he, like, listened to the podcast before we, like, went out, he was like, hey, uh, in, in, your, in the podcast, you mentioned that Herbert was 5'7", and I'm 5'7", and I was like, Oh no. So I went and re-listened to what I had said because I don't re- didn't remember it a ton. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, oh my god, I'm such a terrible person because I was like, yeah, I'm kind of shallow about like I and all this stuff. And then I made a joke and said he probably shopped at the baby gap. And then I like, shouldn't so, have said that. I'm so sorry. Baby candle and Cody is like, I just want to let you know, like, if that's a deal breaker, like I totally understand, but like I don't want to just be like surprised. I'm a short king, you know. And I was like, Oh my god! I just wanted to shoot myself in the face, and I felt so bad about no. that. Um, oh, but like, also, can I say the confidence of a man who's gonna be like, I'm gonna tell you up front, I'm five seven I before. Just, like, I I'm not gonna lie, I melted a little bit, like the candle. I'm, I was right I'm not, <laughs> the candle, and I'm not saying like it, it takes confidence to just admit you're five seven, but I'm saying like n- listening to that and then like bringing it to your attention. I think. I, is very character revealing in a great yes. way. I was very like taken aback in a great way. Yeah. Like all of a sudden he was six seven so to you. Was, like, you know. Yes. Um, I was like, hey, like honestly, my only deal breaker when it comes to you know short man syndrome about it, where they're like trying to overcompensate or just always like you know, you can't wear heels with me, like, you can't yeah. do this with me, because I hated one of those, and it was not fun, and he's not like, good. no, I don't care, like, you can wear heels with me anytime you want, like, whatever, and I said, as long as you're confident, like, I don't care, this totally. man could literally be like, eight, I wouldn't know a difference, but confidence. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, that was a whole ordeal, and I'm just like, oh my god, like, this podcast is getting me in trouble, I feel like. I know, we gotta be careful what we're saying. Um, so, yeah. I love it. So it's great. Um, and then I saw him, like, a few days after that, pretty recent, back to back. And this time we went and got ice cream and we went to support this black business that's in the area next to him with ice love. cream. Um, and then, honestly, like, this is when I knew he was, like, a front runner you know um so we were eating ice cream and then all of a sudden this man starts spilling it all over himself while he eats it and he's wearing like I think he's wearing a pink shirt or something like that like a very pale light shirt Mm -hmm. and it's just spilling all over himself it's in his beard it's like Uh, are you eating your ice cream are you wearing it and I started spilling my ice cream because that's just me if I'm the most clumsy person in the world and then (laughs) this all happened within the span of like two minutes then this bug like lands on his collar of his shirt and like goes down his shirt and I'm like bug there's ice cream all over you and then he spills his ice cream on the bench and it's just like this whole like chaotic moment and then he's like is it okay if you just like go inside like I'm tapping out I need to change and I was like yeah but I like you (laughs) because a guy who has a two put together on a date serial killer that's all I'm saying you heard it here first you heard it here first um (laughs) so yeah that was a a great highlight of that moment um and honestly like I don't know there's things I like want to say and things I don't want to say I mean we should have conversations off camera about things of course um and then he actually came over to my apartment like recently and like that was pretty cool because it's like you know First person over in my place. place. Yes, obviously. I haven't, all my friends are living at home right now. So it was cool. Yeah. Kind of like, like, that's a memory. Yeah. Exactly. So I was like, you should feel special. And he's like, yeah, I can do. Um, is that a candle? Like, honestly, like, I think, like, just to stay in the wholesome zone of this podcast. Totally. Like, I don't know, like, what it is. Maybe it's just like, curative life that I'm in right now but I've never really felt like so excited to be seeing someone if that makes sense like it just kind of feels like the first time I've like ever gone out with someone if that makes sense like I feel like I'm 17 again and like 
just kiss someone for the first time and like oh my god like wow you know what I mean and that's kind of just like the vibe I feel with him and, like it really feels so fresh and new every single time and I think like he's kind of one of the first people I've really just been like okay you know I'm taking this moment by moment like Beautiful. really trying not to get too ahead of myself because I feel like that's kind of how I am as a dater I'm very much like okay like you know long term like what's happening like mm -hmm. blah 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 is it just a short term whatever you know I'm just so over the top thinking about things like that and I feel like this is literally like one of the first times I've been out with someone and I'm like you know what I'm just really enjoying like getting to know this person and like talking through each step not even talking yeah. through each step just like, taking it through each step and not just like totally myself. but honestly yeah like I just the excitement is so weird and so insane and like I don't know like it's just yeah a whole no, I think it's a mix of things. First of all, watching you talk about this is my favorite thing in the world because you're just like so freaking cute and I just love the love, okay? <laughs> Second of all, I think it's a mix of things. I think it's on the one hand, it's kind and I might be hyping it up too much, Candleman and Cody, I'm sorry if this is true, but like, <laughs> I just feel like you're kind of defying the odds. Like there's a global pandemic, there's all kinds of crap happening in our country and none of that matters because you met a great guy and you're just kind of making it work you know what I'm saying yeah 100 percent like I don't know yeah. it just so great and like you know I I think this is like the first time I've actually like really vibed with someone like sure yeah. just like I feel weird talking about it because for me it really doesn't bother me but like just for all the homegirls out there they're like I don't know if I can ever date a shorter person and like really it doesn't matter if you and don't so the that. person you know it's just totally. about the person like yeah. it's not um, all about the ballers all the time oh no they're great sometimes Rachel but <laughs> you know yeah it's just yeah. Been really cool like I literally feel like a teenager again just with like the excitement I love it need to, like go do new things and like such a good sign and it's also just like what a fun thing to enjoy right now you know what I mean like it's just a good thing for this moment live in the moment day by day and we'll see what happens by the time we do our next episode <laughs> yes also yeah uh, I think I forgot to mention earlier while on our first date we were talking about like Fordham and just kind of like our cringy Fordham stories and yes. things like that so he's telling me the story about this one kid who lived in his dorm with him in South. Actually, he was a South boy, by the way. Southie. Southie South girl. <laughs> um, and he was saying like, yeah, so this kid, insert name here, with a last name that I recognized. Mm -hmm. um, and then so I stopped him and I was like, wait, I know someone with that same last name and I inserted the name and he's like, yes, that's his brother. And so I stop and I almost like crapped my pants because this man, not the brother, but the first, the person I knew was someone Rachel and I worked for at some point. That's crazy. In our course at Fordham. Rachel and I had this conversation off camera. So like, yeah, I'm on the same page, sister. <laughs> And so I was like, no freaking way that you know this person. He's like, no, I actually know, like, I know, I knew his brother. He was like, we were the same age, but I also knew who you're talking about. I know, like, his position in this world. Yeah. And I was like, no freaking way. And uh, the person we were for, we were not really fans of. Mm -hmm. um, and I, so I talked about the things that we were not fans about with him. And he's like, yeah, no, his brother was exactly the same way just super cringy and awkward and like okay. x y and z and we were like oh my god like this must be a family thing like <sighs> this whole thing so I literally texted Rachel and I was like you will not believe the conversation I just had and like the dirt on all this like <laughs> we learned so much I, so much and then it's crazy how small the world for them is like everyone I swear yeah. to god is literally linked somehow you always know someone percent. somehow somehow but, because I was crazy, I didn't know that his brother was, like, so close to our age. I thought he was a lot older for some reason, or, like, yeah. maybe you missed him. But, like, literally, our freshman year, Rachel and I's freshman year, like, this guy was a senior. No so, way. Like, it was just a whole crazy thing. That is crazy. But, like, I, there's something meaningful for me. 
Yes. Like the connections and the candles and I'm just so into it. I'm so into it, honestly. He's quite the catch. I'll say that. I'm just so happy. I love watching you talk about him. <laughs> I could do it all day. Like, it's just beautiful. You, you just seem so happy. You really do. In all ways. Like, not just guys. Guys aside, you just seem like you're in such a good place. And I, I don't know how many people could say that right I now. I almost feel, like, guilty for being in such a good place, considering, no. like, everything that's going on. But I literally feel, I don't know, like, I also, like, wrote this on the outline, but I just feel, like, so gorgeous, like, inside and out. I just, like, get such a comfortable place in my life, like, in my inner peace, I feel like, is making me feel so, like, beautiful and comfortable, and, like, I think it's been a really long time since I've felt that, especially with, like, everything, like, going on with the changes and stuff, and so, like, to feel that way on my own is amazing, but also, like, seeing someone that makes me feel like that times 20 is just, like, super awesome, you know, and, like, it's just great exploring like that, you know. A thousand percent. And it's like, oh, this didn't just happen overnight. Like, it's not like you just like got lucky and everything's working out great. Like you did a lot of work. Do you know what I mean? Like you've worked on yourself. You're so like, you're someone I so admire for just always taking it all in and learning from every experience. And I just think it's beautiful to see. Okay. Yeah. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. Um, Emma and Cody, I know you're listening. I hope I did you justice. This Thank man you has for been listening. asking me every time I hang out, like, when this episode's coming out, he's like, I can't Love wait it. to hear you narrate our dates, X, Y, Z, so. Beautiful. I hope this was, did you jump? I think you absolutely but. did. I'm excited for his feedback. Hopefully, he'll send it our way. Cool. I don't know, maybe give us, hey, Candleman Cody, like, subscribe, rate us on Apple Podcasts, we all did. of the things. <laughs> um, we so appreciate it. Yeah, I don't think there's a better way to round out this episode, Kay. I think we landed on a really great place. Um, thank you so much for being here, for doing this again, and we're gonna have, yes, we're gonna have Kay on again next week for the 4th of July special, Left on Red, White, and Blue. I'm so excited to talk more about ghosting and quarantine dating and just getting everybody's perspective on the steps to building a relationship in quarantine, which Kay has done, okay? So stay tuned for that. That's coming out July 5th. Um, in the meantime, you guys can follow us on Instagram at her.blog.life. And you can catch behind the scenes videos of our recordings. Just search Rachel Malik on YouTube and you'll find the channel. So that's so exciting. As always, thank you guys so, so much for listening. Kay, I cannot thank you enough for being here. Thank you for having me on your amazing, amazing podcast. I love you so much. Thank you guys for listening. I'm Rachel Malik. This has been the Her Life Blogcast. Bye.